Emily, France did something similar where mm. they put price caps on essential items like milk, cheese, bread and eggs. Should we be doing that in this country? Yes, I think we should. I think it's got to the situation where it really needs to be reintroduced, Alexis, because we actually did have this policy, this cap in the 1970s, when, of course, those you know watching with long memories will, will, will remember things were really, really dire. I do think we've got to that kind of similar situation now. I see myself in my own neighbourhood, you know, people waiting until supermarket, supermarket um, produce has gone past itself by day and then is put, is put on sale. People can't even afford to buy bread or milk milk at full price. They're having to wait until that 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 price, until that date point has passed. In a recent survey, 1,500 people survey, that's a big, big source. That's a yeah. big, you know, collection of data. 67% of people said that the idea of the government introducing price caps on essential goods to help households manage should be introduced. Because, you know, look at inflation. We have, and I know Lynn might pick me up a little bit. Oh, and if I can see, I ready. can see she's getting ready. She's getting ready. She's getting ready. She's, she's, she's getting ready. Yeah. Um, you know, inflation uh, in, April, in April was running at twen almost 20% food inflation prices. It now has dropped slightly to, I think, 18.1%. But that inflation is still huge. And we've seen yesterday stories, um, that stories in the in the papers and on the on the television news about, you know, supermarkets not passing on the savings in the cut of petrol. petrol. It was, Alexis, but yeah. we've seen that yeah, no, no. with all food, but, all food, all supermarket commodities. The supermarkets are making huge profits and they are not passing it on to consumers. Well, the profits have dropped, but yes, they are still making uh, a, a whole lot of money. £900 million was that extra extra surcharge of 6p per litre mm. uh, that must have uh, taken out of the economy 900 pounds. Uh, Lynn, before we go to the callers, what do you reckon a price cap on essential items, not on everything, but just on the very basics? No, I don't, I don't agree with it because you can't start interfering with the free market and you can't tell corporations and supermarkets what to do with their money. And what we're going to see is we're going to see possibly if they were to do a price cap, other items, which may be essential to many people, are going to increase. And I think one thing I do agree with Rishi is we just have to hold tight. And I do, one of the things I do for a living is better off calculations with people from a lower social economic background. And when you actually get down to the nitty gritty of spending, there's a lot of savings to be made there. And I know that everyone's going through a tough time, but I do think people need to really look into what they're spending and try and cut back in certain okay. areas. All right, let's find out uh, what people at home think. Uh, Richard has called in in Kent. Good afternoon, Richard. Would you like to see price caps? 67% of these people in the survey said that the government should go ahead and help those that are, can't afford to get their hands on basic products. OK, um, I, I think if the government had done something about the, the uh, price of fuel 18 months to two years ago, we wouldn't even need to be talking about price caps. Mm -hmm. I think the main reason that all the essentials have gone up so much is because of the price of fuel and major companies, not just people like Asda, but Shell um, and all those other people, profiteering um, out of the price of fuel. So if fuel had been... Uh, attacked a long time ago, maybe we wouldn't need price caps now. I mean, the supermarkets do, uh, we have to say, have been hauled in in front of MPs to answer questions specifically about profiteering. Of course, they deny. They're saying that, amongst other things, Richard, you're absolutely right, fuel costs, the war in Ukraine, all sorts of energy costs, labour costs, shortage of labour is what's driving prices up. So can you entirely blame it on just that one thing, the fuel costs? Uh, no, I don't think it's the one thing. I think it's a lot of things, but I think fuel cost is a major contributor. OK. And that has also been proven by the government issuing windfall taxes on those major profiteering companies, which doesn't do the man at the pump any okay. good at all. OK, so Richard, given we are where we are, you make a very fine point that this could have been foreseen and perhaps the price is kept low. That didn't happen. The prices are high. As Emily was saying, there are people struggling to buy loaves of bread, a box of eggs, real basics to feed their family. Should the government step in now and put a price cap on all those essential products? Um, no, I don't think so. I don't think Why not? we can start telling um, companies um, at, at this point uh, how much to, to 
to charge for their items, I think we should uh, do something about the big companies profiteering and causing these problems in the first place. Then we wouldn't need to address them. But, but what's so wrong about telling a company, look, with these essential products, please don't add any profits to that. Sell them at cost. Whatever it costs the farmer, whatever costs you to it, just don't put any profits on that. What, what's, what would be so wrong with that? I'm afraid in, in the current um, year of 2023, in this country, everybody seems to be about profiteering. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it needs to be uh, sorted out at source um, before these sort of things happen, not reacting after they happen. OK. All right, Richard, thank you. Profiteering is the big issue, but I mean, some people would say that's, well, you're shaking your head. Is well, that, no, that's... No, 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 can, I, can I just ask Lynn? I to wanted make, to ask Lynn okay, a question. Yeah. You said earlier, before Richard um, talked to us, yeah. you said that there are lots of savings to be made with yeah. the work that you do yeah. with low-income families. Yeah. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, okay. S simple things like, you know, this is not to promote Aldi, but there are places that you can go which will bring down your cost. I've not gone out of, let's say, 200 homes in the last like couple of months where, you know, the teenage daughters haven't been paid to get their eyelashes done or women are not getting their nails done. Or And when I had to cut back, I cut down completely. And I don't think that we're, because we're used to certain things, that's why there's inflation as it is. We've been spending excessively. I don't think people People are really looking at their expenditure on what they can cut back on. And if you look at local authorities, governments uh, locally, they have loads of like funding, food funding, um, home help funding, and people are not looking at those things. So I think we, we're entering dangerous territory when we start asking companies you... to block profit. Because where does it stop? OK, first of all, let's say things do get worse. Let's say there's something, another catastrophe in the country. Well, when will we start to ask like smaller companies, oh, can you not make a profit on that? Every company can justify why they make a profit. And I don't want to see it then trickle down to smaller businesses but if where look, governments if start to the say they four, can't make a If profit. you look at the big four supermarkets, even if you take the big six supermarkets, yeah. during COVID, their profits absolutely skyrocketed. And I think there's a, there are a number of things at play here. As Alexis just um, said earlier, you know, in terms of like inflation, the war in Ukraine, obviously that's, that's contributed to huge soaring food costs. But when you have really, really high prices for the essentials, then it drives people to buy the cheapest food and often that is the ultra processed food now i know we're sort of straying into a slightly different area but you want to try and encourage people to eat as healthily as possible so that means does capping keeping a lower price but that's not on essentials things like then. eggs on things like bread on fruit on vegetables because these are the things that people kind of you know but, literally throw out their food basket but, but is there a danger and uh, the chancellor has spoken about this rishi sunak famously said you know hold the line or whatever the the, the words that he used were, is there a danger that the moment that there is, there's pressure on energy bills, we're asking for help from mm. the government to cap the energy bills. Now there's pressure on food, asking the government to help with the food prices. Have we, since the pandemic perhaps, because we saw that incredible generosity of the furlough scheme, now all of a sudden got used to the fact yes. that whenever things are getting really tight for mm -hmm. people, that we are expecting the government to come in. And the problem with the government coming in, perhaps with the price caps as well, is that you're trying to curb inflation. So there's no point in sort of raising interest rates, but also then giving people money uh, exactly. in the form of, of, I don't want to say a handout because that's the wrong word, but in, artificially, by artificially keeping, keeping the prices, prices low. Down. No, you make a very good point, Alexis, but I think the thing is, is that we have a real problem here in that people cannot afford to eat. And it is all very well for the three of us to sit here I in this air-conditioned studio. Know. So, but Look, no, I, think I don't we should, agree with that. Uh, okay, let, the, food, the use of food banks has, has absolutely exploded. Yeah. Why were people... It, the, the shame and the fear that people... Okay, and I let, see let, that. Let, that let, me pause you, let me pause you too, there because I want to hear from Alan and Carl. Yeah. Marvinshire, who's called in. Good afternoon, Alan. What, what do you make of this? Do you think price caps on food is the best way to make sure that people don't have to visit food banks and can feed their families? No, I think the, uh, the answer would be to cut fuel prices, fuel price. which means that uh, distribu uh, dis uh, distribution networks, they, they, can, um, they can cut prices accordingly um, so it's it's better to cut the fuel prices so that the dis 
distribution networks can, uh, when they're distributing uh, food or whatever it is, they can actually cut the uh, the prices of the food that's going out. Okay, but but Alan, I think a bit like our previous caller, they could have done that. Even if they cut the fuel prices now, you're not going to see that food prices dip. I mean, we still have 18.4% food inflation. That means that every month prices are going up by 18%. It's almost 20% every month. You're paying more and more and more. So yeah, right the, now... The, yeah, the reason for that is that the fuel prices are going up. I mean, the, the supermarkets are making a lot of money out mm. of the fuel prices. Okay. All um, right. So Alan, thank it, you for it, that. It, I've, I've, I've got to leave it there. Both our callers are saying fuel prices. Yeah. The supermarkets are making a lot of money. And when you read the profits, you know, Tesco, one billion, Sainsbury's, 327 billion, million, it sounds like a lot of money. However, they are making about half of what they were making the year before and the year before that. They are looking at their profit margins being around, you know, they were one, two huge to three percent. During the pandemic, though. So it, comparisons are invidious. See, this this is the thing. There's there's two things here. If the government will force supermarkets to cut into their profits because of profiteering, my fear is where does that stop? We're now meddling with the free market. If we ask the government to step in and subsidise those companies, then we're well, looking no, no, at... No, 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 the government shouldn't subsidise. The government shouldn't subsidise. Well, the government should how say, should they for, step for, in, for a, a six-month period, they should say, or whatever, a targeted period, that the cost for the basics should be X or Y, a pint of milk, two pints of milk, six eggs, a loaf, they of, will a never, loaf of brown bread, They will never vegetables. absorb that, though. They will never no, the, absorb the that money. They can absorb that. They can absorb it. If you look at the profit margins, the profits they were making. You want them to cut into their profit. 2020 and 2021. Yeah. Is that what, what you're saying? No, they should. Well, it will perhaps, in fact, but it, okay. won't, it won't impact their profit. No, no, I didn't say impact. You're, I'm saying you no, want them to use their profit to subsidise this. They will just put, they will, they will maybe. Okay. I'll, have, I'll have to bring that to a close. <laughs> We've run out of time. All I can say is that when they did it in France, uh, the retailers agreed to bear the cost of the initiative that the government put forward. I bet there's hidden costs in there. Very uh, rarely possibly, do retailers possibly, absorb that. Possibly.